All right, uh, good afternoon. Um, it's almost exactly noon here, Eastern Standard Time, Friday, August 31st, 2012. This is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. And if you might have heard some of the previous interviews, I've been interviewing independent and third-party candidates that are going to be on the ballots uh, this November 6, 2012, um, Election Day, uh, but mainly for the uh, Congress. Um, and uh, so I thought it would be neat. Uh, it, well, I've been interviewing a lot of independents. Um, a lot of people, though, uh, that are third parties are either part of the Green Party and, and the Libertarian Party nowadays. And so I thought it would be pretty neat to talk to someone on the staff of the Green Party. Um, we have today uh, Scott McClarty. And, uh, and uh, so, Scott, it's great to talk to you. Uh, and, and good afternoon. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing fine. And thank, thank you very much for having me on. Great. Well, there's a couple questions I, I was uh, wanted to ask since we have this time here. Um, uh, w w one of well, I'll just go through the questions, and I'll, I guess I'll ask them. It's um, one is about uh, that I was thinking. My mind is um, there's so many things I see between y your party and, and Libertarian Party. Even both of your websites are one's gp.org and one's lp.org, and you both have ten platform things um, that they're, they're a little bit different but they're they're I mean I guess probably about half of them each probably would merge and be about the same thing and um, and as I've been doing these interviews I go to like the S like where I get all the candidates contact information on the FEC websites anyone can look it up um, they it has uh, direct links to the Secretary of State or the Department of Elections for each of the states and then from there you can get a candidates list and um, now, I've been trying not to interview um, uh, districts where there's a Libertarian and a Green Party person or an Independent in the same district. I've been trying to go to a district where interview someone where there's a you know Republican, Democrat, and a Green Party person, or a Republican, Democrat, and a Libertarian, or, or something like that, or right. an Independent. And actually, there are plenty of um, districts like that, um, actually, where there is just a Green Party, just a Libertarian Party, and um, just, I guess this is just food for thought, um, is that, uh, you, you know, because one thing that, like, I interviewed this guy named um, Andrew Groff, and he's running for um, the uh, for Senate in Delaware um, under the Green Party. He's also um, endorsed by the Libertarian Party, and, and, and that kind of goes with the whole spirit of my website, or the title of it, LibertarianProgressive.com, and um, and I mean, I, I think like, you know, if, if they, there could be more coordination like that, like, you know, if there's someone not running in that district, then then you know what, we'll support um, that person from the Green Party or Libertarian Party if they agree on like just, you know, some certain things like, you, you know, less war spending, more civil liberties, um, getting people easier access on the ballot or something, just leave it at that. Right. And, you, you know, if we don't have someone next year, then, then you, you know, we'll, we'll uh, adjust during that time. But, but because at least you're going to help each other get on the ballot more and eventually maybe you know you'll turn into the republicans and democrats we hope not but i mean um well i think the most important thing to understand here is that the debate between democrat and republican is very very narrow and the uh the principal uh ideas and positions that that green party candidates and libertarian party candidates bring to the table are very valuable uh, they represent a much greater uh, range of, uh, of political ideas and solutions to different crises than we'll ever get from the Democrats and Republicans. And of course, you know, the Greens and Libertarians, we do have some sharp differences, but uh, on other things, uh, our, our positions overlap very neatly. And we've, as you say, we've worked together on... Uh, on efforts to knock down uh, these restrictive and prohibitive ballot access laws that were that were really enacted by Democrats and Republicans in a sort of backroom agreement to keep the political field clear just for themselves. I mean, if people were being honest, the definition of that would be a, a cartel. I, I think um, it, it's a. Uh, but um, now, what the debates are another important thing that um, you, you know needs to be addressed. If someone has enough signatures to get on the ballots, I, I mean, you, you, you know, or if they have a, a legitimate chance to win, I mean, should they not be included in the debates? Well, you're absolutely right, and uh, the the uh, criterion for getting into the presidential debates should be whether a, a candidate is 
on enough ballots around the, the around the United States to win the election if enough people voted for that right. candidate, right. That regardless of polls or anything like that. But you know, the Commission on Presidential Debates was uh, is, is actually owned and run by the Democratic and Republican parties, and you know they've passed around men memos that have been published uh, that show very clearly that their intention is to well, reserve the, the debates just for Democratic, for the Democratic candidate versus the Republican candidate, and, uh, you know, without any other kind of competition in the, uh, in the race. And as, you know, the League of Women Voters right. used to run the presidential debates, they, got, they had the debates taken away from them, I think it was after in 1988. Perot, yeah. yeah, after 1992, because after, they saw how well Ross Perot did in and, those debates. And when the, uh, that takeover took place, the League of Women Voters called it a fraud on the American voter. It is, and shouldn't we? Shouldn't the debates be set up like democratically? I mean, instead of run by some corporation, it seems like. Um, well, absolutely. I mean, this is like public information. How can we expect to make um, informed decisions if we don't know all the facts? That's like going into a buying a car and then not telling you like all the different uh, details about the car that yeah, you're purchasing. A, or, a fraud on the American voter. I mean, I, I can say, you know, consumer advocate, voter advocates. Um, and uh, and Ralph Nader, I mean, he ran on the Green Party, and, and he had a le so I see what you're saying. If there's a statistical chance where they could win uh, yes. with how many people are on on the on the ballots and and, and et cetera, that's um, they should open up the debates. And you're right, it's uh, the the difference of depth you're going to get. I mean, electing the lesser of two evils for this amount of time um, has led us to. Um, uh, the twins, Obama and um, and Romney, and uh, well, well, let's look at the whole. You know, we can we can make a a, a big list of uh, of issues, important issues that are not going to get discussed or are going to be discussed uh, maybe just by reference or in the most superficial way by Romney and Obama. And uh, you know, uh, just to talk about things on on which the uh, Green Party and Libertarian parties agree, you, we could we could talk about the the war on drugs record high incarceration of Americans in the uh, prison industrial complex, many on nonviolent offenses. We could talk about the, uh, we could mention the, the Afghanistan war and uh, the impunity for war criminals and for corporate criminals, and both Romney and Obama support this impunity. You know, there are a whole, there's a whole list of things that aren't going to get discussed or aren't going to get discussed in yeah, any kind of in the intelligent way because of the exclusion. They're debating the extremes to what extent they want to take some of these policies instead of just re, you know, thinking the whole policy itself or redoing it. Um, well, I, the difference between Romney and Obama is really a kind of a factional dif difference. They believe in the same premises. They have different arguments that are based on the same premises. For instance, the U.S. should be allowed to invade any country around the world at will. They both believe in that. Now, they, they might have some particular policy differences, but they believe in that, in that one basic ideology of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of military aggression in defiance of uh, international and U.S. laws. Yeah, Obama, even in the debates against McCain, took um, you know his ability to invade Pakistan further than McCain did. And, sure. Uh, uh, it, now, right now, I mean, it, this should be a prime year. Like, if I was in the strategy room of the Libertarian Party or in the uh, Green Party, um, uh, and, and even independents, that's the biggest. There's more independents than there are Democrats and Republicans, and even disgruntled Republicans and Democrats. Just Americans, basically, are people that are interested. Is I mean, you've got to think this is like something is cooking this year. There's a lot. Like when I went to GP.org, and, and when I you have a list of all your candidates there, and. Um, and, 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 I mean, there's a lot, like, in all these local districts and all these congressional districts. I mean, we're, t you know, a lot of people are just totally foc exclusively focused on the presidential election. 
but there's a lot, I mean, hundreds, if not thousands of people running in all these local offices. And, and I think these are more attainable. And right now, according to the Gallup poll, which is a trusted source um, for most people, I guess, um, it's not any worse than any other polls, uh, that Congress has a record low um, as early as August 24th. It was um, recorded um, uh, an approval rating of uh, 10%. Um, in other polls, I think it's been lower. But, I mean, the media is like, uh, you know, right not too far above that. I mean, so people, um, it's not apathetic totally because they're voicing that they are giving a 10%. You, you know, they're not say, voting like, I don't care or I'm indifferent. They're saying you know, there's a 10% approval rating. And uh, I mean, this has got to be a, a, you know, an opportunist year for people who believe in freedom, the constitution or, or civil rights, um, an equal playing field for business. Uh, I mean, what do you think? Well, I, mean, I think you're correct. And, uh, you know, they, I mentioned before the impunity for corporate criminals who uh, were responsible for many of the actions that caused the, uh, the 2008 meltdown is a, uh, is a perfect, perfect example of this. And, you know, it's been very interesting to watch the Occupy movement, uh, which has included mostly progressives and people who consider themselves on the left, but a lot of libertarians have shown up oh, yeah. as well. And uh, in in my opinion, that's Gary a, that's Johnson a good, was at some of those. Yeah, that's a good sign. And you know, I, I think if the Green Party and I would guess the Libertarian Party as well stand for anything, it's the principle that voters deserve the right to vote for whichever candidate best represents their interests and ideals, without being told that only two candidates are legitimate or valid or belong on the on the ballot if uh, everything you know, it, in life only had two choices i mean we would be in a whole different society now i mean well, i, I wouldn't you know, want to imagine what that would look like it'd probably be really well it's like, like it's, it's like being told that you know you have you have a you have a choice of what you can have for dinner big mac or whopper <laughs> you know and, and you know what, Green Party, I, I looked over your pl platform, like Libertarian Party, I look over their platform, too. They have 10 points, and they, they, they purposely made those points so they're not too arguable. I mean, they're just mostly basically on civil libertarian principles. And, and yours, I mean, you have a good, pretty good platform. Um, one thing that was surprising um, that I didn't expect to see so much of was, I mean, how much you guys focused on uh, small business, which was pretty cool. Yes. we Well, uh, the uh, one of the key principles, one of the key values of the Green Party is decentralization. And, you know, we don't really, we don't really consider the opposition between socialism and capitalism as the, as the, as the governing paradigm. That's not, that's not the main thing. For us, it's, it's, it's more a, a question of power. And, you know, is, is economic and political power going to be centralized? in either government or corporate bureaucracies, or is it going to be uh, devolved uh, to the local level and the, and the individual level? In other words, do people, do Americans deserve control over their own uh, uh, personal and uh, economic lives? And uh, that's, not, that's not something that's really addressed very much in, uh, in the debate between the Democrats and Republicans. And, you know, there's, there's going to be no debate on, uh, on things like, well, the medical marijuana raids, supported by both Obama and, and, uh, and Romney, or uh, surveillance of U.S. citizens without any kind of warrant. I mean, that's a gross violation of the Constitution, the Fourth Amendment. But that's not going to be discussed. That's going on. They're both Obama and Romney approve. But and so they're not going to discuss it at all. Only de only Greens and Libertarians are going to talk about such things. And those are some of the most important things. I, I mean, right right now. I, I mean, I feel like I mean, in 2012. I mean, maybe you know this year we could get um, like you know right now there's like two independents in the U.S. Congress. Uh, I mean, it would be at least good to get some double digits and maybe increase those um, gains uh, two years from now. And, and thankfully, 
um, the House of Representatives, there are elections every two years. And I'm still just amazed by how many people that there are on on both of those parties, Libertarians and the Green Party, I mean, running in all these local offices. Um, I mean, imagine the headlines saying uh, November 7th, the day after Election Day, uh, is uh, that uh, there was um, a wave, a, a record amount of uh, third party independent-minded libertarians, Green Party people um, elected to the Congress, elected to local offices. I, I mean, that would be something that the media couldn't ignore anymore. Well, well what, what you're talking about is really a kind of a political revolution. And it's a revolution... It's called that Occupy a, Our Government, um, yeah. legally, by voting and, and, and being, you know, in a yeah, civilized a, society. That's how, you know... Occupy. It, it's, a re, it's a rebellion in which, uh, in which people enact their rebelliousness uh, in the voting booth as well as elsewhere you can't right. just things aren't just going to happen because uh, people vote a different way but uh, you know I, you, uh, let's imagine something else imagine that several alternative party candidates got seated in congress right now you've got a, we've got what an independent bernie sanders in the senate what if we had uh, three or four greens maybe three or four libertarians who were elected to Congress? That would that would cause a convulsion. It would it would cause a, uh, a, a an, an earthquake in the political system because it would show that Democrats and Republicans may no longer be each other's sole competition. And when that happens, it throws open the the public debate to uh, many more ideas. It changes the dynamic of how things are negotiated. And uh, and legislation is written and passed in Congress as well. Uh, you know, I I think what's happening right now in in U.S. politics, especially at the national level, is that we're we're moving towards uh, uh, towards a country that uh, that has more repression of individual rights, more repression of. Uh, 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 less power for people uh, on economic grounds. You know, uh, people are, are less able to control their own uh, financial circumstances. People are losing their economic st stability. The uh, that's causing a depression in the uh, middle class, in particular, as people lose their jobs. And uh, there's more competition for fewer jobs, which depresses wages. Uh, we're moving in that direction, and some people have compared it to uh, a movement towards a kind of a neo-feudalism, uh, in which power is concentrated in these uh, in these bureaucracies. Yeah, neo-feudalism, neo neo-fascism. I mean, the merger of corporation and states. I mean, a lot the of the merger of corporation and states is exactly what we're talking about here. And I think Mussolini. You said fascism. Mussolini talked about this. He called it the Stato Corporativo which means the corporate state in which government exists to serve the interest interests of financial elites which you know means I mean look at Michigan I mean sector. there's corporations taking over city councils and stuff like that because yes. of the governor I mean eventually I mean imagine some kind of you, you know, a corporate neighborhood where people, you, you know, I mean, the, 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 the fear of, you know, people use a cliche new world order, but how I would see the new world order is like, you know, you're at work 24-7, you, you know, at a place without a union, um, and uh, basically you wake up and sleep, you probably wake up with like a little trumpet waking you up or something, time to get to work and make sure you eat perfect so, you, you know, you're... It's it's uh, your healthcare costs aren't down as corporation pays for that and everything. I mean that would be some kind of weird twisted twilight zone. But um, well, healthcare is a very interesting thing because it's interesting that you bring that up because in healthcare, uh, you know, we keep hearing Obama and uh, and Romney talk about free market healthcare in different ways. And what they really mean by free market healthcare is control over our healthcare by. Uh, by health insurance corporations, what I call the insurance, the health insurance cartel, and that's supposed to represent, that's supposed to mean free market. But in fact, it's the opposite of free market. Go look at your insurance policy. What does it say? Does it tell you you can go to any doctor, to any hospital? No, it tells you what hospital, what physician you can visit. There doesn't really exist any kind of free market in healthcare itself. The uh, 
the corporate insurance system has killed the uh, has killed competition uh, between hospitals between physicians for our services. Oh yeah, that's that's um, that's that, that's that's a fact. I, I mean, it's it, it, the um, the health debates i mean here's uh, in, in, i mean let me get my thoughts here together uh, involving corporation and state like here's an argument that i think is um gets the whole premise wrong is like people are calling obamacare or, or romney care you could call it um socialism when it's not even it's it's pure fascism and, and then people are calling what happens to um, our uh, in 2008 and an economic crash, um, capitalism, which that's the furthest thing from capitalism. So I mean, you h hear people blaming capitalism when it wasn't capitalism. You hear people blaming socialism when it wasn't socialism. They're not using these no, uh, terms. No, it, it was the convergence of government and corporate interests. I mean, we have a that's separation of religion and states, um, and, and and so I mean, that's basically a corporation is another type of organization that tries to put itself um, above the law and. Uh, and, and well, they we benefited quite a bit from the uh, 2010 Supreme Court decision, Citizens United, which di which upheld the uh, the status of corporations as persons. And uh, you know, corporations aren't persons; they have far greater power. Well, they can't have the death penalty. That's why I'm saying, like, when they're above the law, I mean, persons. Yeah, you know, they could be responsible for deaths. Um, I, saw, I saw a slogan: "I believe in corporate personhood." When uh, Texas executes a corporation. Yeah, I mean, um, it, that, that's 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 right. I saw that slogan as well. And um, now, um, and, and it's basically a way to avoid getting sued um, uh, directly. I mean, that's, I think, the, well, I guess it's a way to have an organization and, and have directors and stuff like that, too. But I think, here's, I mean, I, I would think um, one way of making it, like, get instead of getting the money out of politics, just maybe making it uh, less irrelevant. I mean, someday maybe we could have, like, a national public election channel uh, that gives equal airtime to all the candidates, make sure it has the debates on there where everyone gets um, uh, equal time, the exact same questions, uh, and, um, you know, and have it all around the country. There could be, like, m many election channels for uh, local areas. Um, well, we have this absurd system uh, in, in which we have people running for president two years before the, uh, virtually two years before the election takes place. And uh, a lot of other countries, you know, the, uh, the election season is a couple of months long. And uh, it forces people to listen to the candidates, to listen to their positions on different issues. Uh, we also have this, this, this huge flood of often misleading and extremely uh, emotionally based uh, campaign advertising on on TV and the radio, and in which the candidates are basically sniping each other, or they are saying things that are completely irrelevant to what they're actually going to do once they get into public office. Now, what do you think of like if you, since you're you know as part of the staff of the Green Party? Uh, I w would you have any like um, just any observations that you notice about candidates that are trying to start up or people that are trying to support them um, of uh, you know maybe somewhat of an observation type advice um, any thoughts about that from your you, you know experience well i have I have uh, practical observations about uh, about political campaigns, for instance, the campaigns that are the best organized that have a, a good fundraising apparatus, uh, a good media director, a, a good vo volunteer coordinator, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, they know how to raise some money for their campaigns. They tend to do, they tend to do a lot better. Uh, sometimes they win. Sometimes winning for a candidate doesn't mean getting elected to office. It means getting a lot of very important ideas into the public debate that would not be there if that candidate had not decided to run. So, you know, whatever you do, whatever you do as a candidate, uh, do it the best you can and uh, uh, have a well-organized campaign. Don't, don't just run as a, uh, as a single maverick without any kind of others, without any kind of, uh, of uh, uh, establish, uh, uh, a staff or, a, a staff or, or, or battery of support for yourself. Uh, you know, get out there, running a running a good campaign. Learn how to campaign, and uh, do a great job. And the effect that you have 
on the election, whether you win or not, and of course we hope you win, the effect you have will be very, very important. You'll contribute something that is extremely valuable to the, uh, the, the, the voters, to the citizens of the uh, jurisdiction in which you're running. Well, I would say, and, and, and especially like in these um, districts where there's only one like person running that's not a Republican or Democrats, and and um, and, and they're just the typical Republican and Democrats. I mean, it that it's kind of like um, in some cases only a Democrat or only a Republican is running. Right. In some cases, yeah, that's that's true. And, and in some places, like in California, where they have the, the, the best of two runoff um, type elections, there's like two Republicans running in some places or two Democrats. Right. And uh, but I mean, if, if there's a place, you, you know, that's like that, where they have the um, endorsement of the Libertarian and the Green Party, uh, it would give actually the other party free advertising, um, kind of like um, that. Um, uh, the story of like how, you know recommending Macy's or whatever it's 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 it, it actually could be a benefit that way it's um, mm -hmm. so if there's no other candidate well uh, Scott it's it's been a pleasure and, and thank you for your time and your passion here and thank uh, you so much I invite people to visit our website which is gp.org that's GP as in Green Party and learn all about us of course learn about other alternative parties too including the Libertarian Party and expand your mind expand your knowledge of what is actually out there it's not it's not a choice between coke and pepsi it's not a choice between big mac and whopper that's represented by the democrats and republicans i mean if we got 50 people into the uh, congress um out of the 500 something well we'd be another country <laughs> that that would be a revolution that would yes, really that would be, be an absolute revolution that that, that right that I mean, would be that would be that the if, that would be a new america and a and a far better america yes or you know and an alternative to the dismal future that we face of politics limited to these to these two uh, increasingly authoritarian uh, and uh, uh, pro corporate parties, the Democrats or Republicans that are in power right now. That's right. It would create new neuro nets in our minds. It would expand our consciousness. It would make us think out of the box, and yes. um, and, and it would inspire people's uh, hope. Um, and well, it is a pleasure. I hope you have an excellent weekend, um, Scott. And uh, uh, you, you know, best uh, success uh, for on on election day. And thank uh, you. And good luck to you too. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, I'll say goodbye to you real quick after I end this here. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye.